All right, welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And we're quickly gonna take a look at some of the updates that FS2 Crew has had for the Fly-by-Wire A320. So it's been a couple of months um, since this released and they've been updating it very regularly. They've been adding new features and tweaking some of the existing features. Uh, huge praise to FS2 Crew. They've listened to pretty much everything that we've asked for. So we're gonna be taking a look at some of the interface changes um, that have occurred and the additional features that they've added. If you are looking for a tutorial on how to use the software, I'll put a link up at the top to the video I made when the software released, where I run through a full flight. Today, we're just gonna be taking a look at some of the changes. And first up, probably the biggest one is this. We now have the FS2 Crew Product Manager. So no longer do you need to go to the forum to go and download the updates for the Fly-by-Wire A320 and Pushback Express. It's now done automatically through the product manager. There's a setting that you can have this run on the startup of your computer and look for updates and it will automatically install them. So as you can see, we're currently on version 1.1.7 of the Fly-by-Wire A320 NX Project Edition. Right, so let's jump back into the sim and take a look. As always, we can launch this from our command center. So if we go to our drop-down menu here and choose the Fly-by-Wire, we can launch that application and it'll take a few seconds to open up. Right, there we go. So we now have our panel and uh, we're gonna take a look at some of the settings and the changes. What I also want to do while this is happening is I'm just going to run the pre-flight events so we can kind of see um, what it controls. So we can see the jetway, ground power is coming up, we'll have the fuel truck coming along um, and we can have that running in the background while we do this. So let's go into the settings. Now, next big thing is that as of now, your custom settings, so everything we choose in here is now preserved when you update to the next version. So before you'd install a new version, it would overwrite, you'd have to come back in and redo all of your settings. That is no longer the case. It's now preserved when you update, which is fantastic. One of the other big things that they listen to the community is the addition of the hard and soft mute. So if we come down here to our hotkey section, I'm in open microphone mode. Um, as always, if you want to know what anything does, just mouse over it. It's all built into the tooltips. But with open microphone mode, it's always listening to the microphone. I find that easier than pushing a button. You can obviously, if you want, have a push to talk key. You'll have to disable this. And now we can use a push to talk key. I don't like holding down a button when I'm talking. I prefer to have my hands on the controls, etc. And that is something that the software didn't have when it first released. It was all push to talk. Um, well, you could do open mic with some workarounds but now it's built in so we have open microphone mode but it then helps to have it muted when i'm talking to you guys like i am now if i go and unmute i have to close this but if i unmute it's going to start picking up all sorts of um erroneous commands like you can see it's trying to pick up commands that i'm giving as i'm talking and if you're busy flying this could have some negative effects if we put it that way so now we can use hard and soft mute uh, to stop it picking up commands when we're not actually talking to fly by wire. Right, so let's have a look at the difference between hard and soft mute. Very simple, hard mute is just a toggle. So if I push my key, it toggles the mute on. You can see it's muted by the little yellow microphone symbol. And um, I push the key once, it stays muted until I toggle it off by pushing the key again. Soft mute works slightly differently. So with soft mute, we need to hold down the key. And while we're holding it down, it's muted. As soon as I release the key, it is now unmuted. So let's go and mute that again and go back to our settings. The way that you assign these hotkeys has also changed slightly. Now we have the ability to assign joystick buttons as well. But before you kind of just click in here and, and push the button that you wanted to use. But now we need to go into assignment. You can say start scan and now you can press any key on the keyboard or on your joystick. So I'll go and hit V. And once it's done, don't forget to save the changes so it actually applies it. Right, they've added a couple of new settings, particularly this section at the top here. I'm not really going to go through too much of that because as always, you can just mouse over it and uh, it'll tell you exactly what it is and what it does. And then you can decide whether you want that on or off. So for example, let's take a look at our boarding sounds. We can choose to have our passenger boarding sounds or cabin sounds on. You cannot have them both activated at the same time. If we mouse over our passenger boarding sounds, you'll see um, plays the sound of pre-flight events, which will be the passengers getting onto the aircraft. If you choose cabin boarding, it's going to play 
Music. Right, as we're doing that, our fuel truck has arrived. And he's going to pull in when that happens. It'll open up our fuel panel. But uh, on that note, if we take a look at our ground services, we can choose what ground services are actually activated during the pre-flight events. So I like to have them all on, kind of just use it to its full potential. Um, it makes the apron, it makes you know the activity around the aircraft just a little bit more interesting right let's go ahead and close that the other thing that was added quite a while ago actually is our checklist we now have the airbus checklist available as a panel from fs to crew um, and you can pop that up and you can place that wherever you want you can change the size you can have that on an, on another monitor if you want but that's kind of nice it just gives you the um, checklists in that little window but remember we can also make use of the checklist assist so it's going to pop up here and kind of guide you in what you should be expecting what you should be saying and what you should be doing here under our flows all right so there our fuel panel has popped up at this stage you could go in and put in as much fuel as you need uh, set your payload etc and once you close that fuel truck will automatically drive away then last but not least something else that has been improved is something that i struggled with in my previous video but um, the detection of the below the line command has been fixed i struggled to get that trigger to work but uh, according to the patch notes in this version 1.1.7 they've now fixed that so that issue should be sorted and the detection of that trigger should now be improved there have also been various other bug fixes which weren't specifically listed, but overall we should see an improvement in FS2 crew. All right, so that's gonna bring us to the end of this video. If you found this useful, you know what to do down below. Once again, I will put a link up to the top again for um, the full flight where I will go through how to use FS2 crew during your flight from start to finish. So if you're looking for a tutorial on how to use the software, go and check that out. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video.